What's up, you guys? Welcome to the video. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going stage two boot mode, and we're going to be using the Wi Fi agent. So, a little bit different of a process than what you guys have most likely seen all over the internet. Most people just use their laptops. I unfortunately have a Fry laptop, so that is not going to work for me. So, we're going to be using the Wi Fi agent, which makes it as easy enough to connect right to your cell phone. Flash on the fly. Let's go outside. Let's hop right in. Alright, so if you've never done this with the phone adapter and the Wi-Fi agent, it's as simple as connecting the ENET cable to the OBD port underneath the footrest, connecting the other end to the adapter, and then connecting this USB cable underneath the armrest to the USB slot. And as well, Pro Tuning Freaks also does recommend to connect your battery to a charger just because that very first time you flash the car, it will take a little bit. Mine probably took about five to 10 minutes that very first time. And then after, once the DME is unlocked, pretty quick I'm not gonna lie it's pretty quick so then also if you've never done this before you're gonna have to have your Wi-Fi name the network as well as the password be all lowercase boot mode just so that the agent can connect right to your Wi-Fi network as opposed to having to go search it's a lot easier this way I'm gonna go ahead add in the screen record right about now and as you can see my Wi-Fi network and my password are boot mode so it immediately the OBD is connected we're gonna hop right in I'm gonna go into diagnostics and I'm going to make sure the active sound is enabled just because with the burbles I want to just see if that has anything to do with mine aren't if you watched the last video mine are set to very high but they're not as crazy as I thought they would so I'm gonna I'm gonna enable them and just see if that has anything to do because basically this is still a learning progress for me as well I'm still trying to fine-tune what I want with the burbles so hopefully hopefully that does something so we had the car in accessory mode we killed as much power the lights are off the air is off let's hop right into my maps so this is your first time if you ever just purchased a license you only have access to one map but as you see I have multiple maps because I do have the map bundle so I definitely recommend it because if you want to start with stage one once you get that once you get that just that oof, once you get that feel for the flash you're gonna want to go stage two so here it is stage two we're gonna go into configuration uh, for exhaust burble I think I'm for right now I think I'm just gonna leave it as OEM for right now just to see what it's like at OEM. And then we're gonna go down to, uh, where are we at? The catalytic monitor cell. We are gonna turn that right off. Because as of right now, I was getting the um, check engine light coming on here and there. It's actually on right now. So if you ever need to just check your check engine light, if you wanna check codes, clear codes, I've been using this VPeak scanner. This thing is clutch. It also helps you check your battery's health. So that thing is clutch. But hopefully by turning off the catalytic monitor, it just goes away. I don't really feel like having no check engine lights. We're going to go ahead and save these changes. Okay, we're going to hop out. Stage 2, 93 octane. Flash the car. Press here to flash now. See, so yeah, like I said, that first time is going to take a little bit. This time should be very quick, smooth sailing. But 
just for precautionary issues I do have the battery connected to the charger just gotta be smart no messing around as well as I have the trunk open right now just as you know safety first no messing around I always want to have access to the battery So as we get started, you can hear the car almost humming a little bit. It doesn't turn on, but you can definitely tell something's going on. And as we get started, see a smooth sailing from here. So the only thing required for stage two is a front mount intercooler and a high cadet flow downpipe, both of which we are running. So take stage two, here we go. Just like that, bada bing, bada boom. 99% completed. Flash successful. The head unit all lights up. Right now we have the brake system, drive moderately, and that'll all go away. Clearing codes in the ECUs. Stage two, 93 octane success. Please wait five seconds and start the car. So I wanna go in as well and check diagnostics. All right, so active sound is enabled, so that's what I wanted to know. And then also for my maps, I want to check exhaust verbal at OEM. So at OEM, it seems to be not too aggressive, but we're just gonna see what that's like for now. And then I'll most likely change that. So I'm still trying to fine tune exactly what I want for the burbles. Mine actually aren't too crazy. When we went stage one, I went super aggressive, and I wasn't really sure if the active sound played any part in that, because as I had the settings on super aggressive, it didn't sound as aggressive as what I've seen on other people's cars. Other people I've seen like obnoxious gunshots, and I just want to try that out. It's not necessarily something I want to keep, but I definitely want to see the car being obnoxiously loud. I mean, it already is, but not with the burbles. So we're gonna fine tune that. We're gonna figure out you know, just the right happy medium with the settings there. So yeah, let's go for a ride. All right, moment of truth. I'm quite curious to see if the check engine lights on. So let's rock and roll. Check engine light is gone. So I know it's supposed to clear that immediately, but when we went stage one, I didn't turn off the option for it, so it kept coming back on. So it would turn off for a little bit, turn it on, come back on, and then I was clearing it with the adapter, so this thing is clutch, but I thought with the flash tune that it would just clear completely. So hopefully with just turning on that section, turning off the monitor altogether, hopefully that is my fix. That's not fun. So I went for a nice long cruise yesterday. So I have a nice grasp and feel of stage one. So I'm super, super curious to see if there's gonna be any feel, any difference in stage two. Especially with the burbles. Absolute beautiful day, it's about 65 degrees out in South Jersey. Feels good to have my windows down. I can't wait for some summertime driving and have the windows down. This car is just meant for the windows to be down at all times. Perfect for the summertime. Alright, so no burbles as of right now. We're gonna have to change that. Alright, so it seems to be third time's the charm. Not too crazy though. I've seen a bunch of videos of people sounding pretty crazy. So the aggression's all the way up. So I'm not sure if the active sound design plays any factor in that. So let me know if you know if the active sound design plays any part in whether the bird was are crazy, crazy loud. Cause I've seen plenty of videos of them things sounding insanely loud and mine are only sometimes loud so I don't know if the active sound design has any any role in that really but 
These are similar to the settings I had with stage one, so I'm content with the snap, crackle, and pops we do have, even though they're not too crazy. I don't really want them crazy, I just want to experience it, really. So there's some, some crackles, some pops, nothing too ridiculous. It's still the same where, just in my lower RPMs, I get them pretty, pretty loud. Like, I'll go into a second gear pull right now. And that's when they're loud. It's the third gear pull. Not too crazy. But overall, the feel, it doesn't really feel much different than stage one. I know the, the difference isn't too crazy, so I was just curious to see if I would feel anything. Regardless, the car's still a freaking beast. So now that we're stage two, now we gotta get the car dynoed, 100%. I'm trying to see, number-wise, what we're putting down. All right, fam, just like that, we're stage two. It definitely feels cool to say. And I just love how easy the simple interface is. I mean, it's so simple, it's so smooth, it's straightforward, I mean. Once you have the bolt-ons, all right, click the flash, bada bing, bada boom, stage two. So I'm definitely excited. I want to get this dyno ASAP, <laughs> ASAP. I'm trying to go get this dyno to see what kind of power we're putting down as soon as possible. Appreciate you guys watching, but for real, let me know if you guys know how we get these crackles and pops louder. I don't know if there's any difference between the manual and the auto. I don't know if that plays any factor, and then I don't know if having the active sound design plays any role so let me know if you know if you have more experience than i do because i've only gone stage two and i've only had boot mode a couple weeks now so i'm still learning it's all learning progress so going back to oem and the off the shelf custom variables no you gotta do just custom all the way up you would think that'd work but i know it can go louder i know it can go crazy i've seen plenty of videos of people's cars doing some crazy loud exhaust burbles and we're gonna get there, we're just not there right now. But other than that, other than the burbles, the car feels great, it feels like a monster, it pulls great. I can't really tell much of a difference between between stage one and stage two, but it's what it is, no worries. But like I said in past videos, I got a shit ton of sick content coming, so make sure you turn those notifications on, subscribe to your boy, smash that subscribe button, Please and thank you. Give me a nice thumbs up as well. Also, I previously mentioned I'm on Facebook now, so follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. I post pictures on the daily, on the reg. Appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.